going back when you started? Was it 20 years ago that you started photographing animals? Well, or Yes, but the investigate, like the heavy investigative work started just over 10 years ago. Okay, so 10 years ago, I imagine your mental preparation for going in would be quite different mm-hmm. to now. As you said, you've seen so much of it already. Yes, and I felt... Not only did I feel everything deeply, but I felt like I had a duty to feel everything deeply because yeah. the animals are suffering so intensely that the least I can do with my freedom and my home and my choices in life is to go there. Um, and I think that's good. I think we need to really consider and feel feel all of this, but we don't need to live in, in that, in those feelings and in that suffering. And that's what I had to learn over time. I, uh, I had to learn to have healthy emotional barriers, not the unhealthy ones where you're suffering and feeling things and then stuffing the emotions down and ignoring them. Or there are all sorts of things that we can do to make ourselves emotionally sick and physically ill um, when we're not dealing with what we're seeing. Uh, what are some of the healthy barriers that you utilize, Jo? Well, uh, I mean, very practically speaking, again, um, when you get into a facility, you have a very short amount of time to do the best possible job, coming back to beautiful images, poignant images. And so me focusing on my emotions is not going to help the animals. I have to be, for lack of a better word, professional. I have to concentrate and and that actually that actually helps. I mean, people often ask me if the camera is a, an emotional you know, barrier. That's what we were going to ask, yeah, actually. A yeah, buffer yeah. or a filter, yeah. Yeah, um, I think it's more nuanced than that, but in a way it is. Um, what is the point of me going to these places if I'm going to take crappy images that yeah. people cannot relate to? Yeah. And, um, so you and kind of have to connect with the emotion of this situation in order to convey that emotion through the photography in a way. Thank you for saying that so, <laughs> so well. Yeah. And yet at the same time, really focus on the task at hand and not get so swept up that your hands are shaking and that the, mm-hmm. you know, the focus is out and you take a, a not so great image. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not and to be overwhelmed by it, I guess. And there are things you can do to keep the hands from shaking. Oh, really? Which is focus on your breath. Okay. Yeah, not focus on, I don't focus on my, I'll just speak for myself, not focus on my emotions, but focus on inhaling and exhaling slowly and moving slowly because I don't want to, the animals are already terrified. I don't want to move quickly. I don't want them to have to pay attention to me any more than they already are. I don't want them to sense that there's panic, you know. Um, so it's for me, but it's, it's for the animals as well. I wanted to ask you, have you ever been caught in the middle of a shoot? Have you, has the code red never come through quick enough or something like that and, and you've been caught? Do you want some anecdotes? I mean, yes. Uh, if you can share anything them. that you care to share. Oh, I mean, there's, I could, we could sit back and <laughs> I could tell you all sorts of stories. Um, I've certainly had my share of code reds that I have escaped from. Um, unlike a lot of my investigator friends who have been caught, I mean, there have been, you know, swooping headlights, you know, and like, what are the, the big, you know, beam, like the beams, you've got to like drop to the ground and yeah, or like, cool. or like when it run, goes that way, like run this way and hop, hop a fence and have someone on the other side of the fence, like waiting to take your gear, you know, and I remember hopping over a fence just as the light followed me and we ran into the forest and like <gasps> we smashed some li- some of our lighting and oh, it's, it's, it's like a movie. movie. I mean, you're, you're oh, living a life like a movie, but you're yeah. behind the camera at the same time. It's, it's, it's a bit of a mind warp. It, it's a lot. It's Gosh. a lot. Um, I mean, I, I'm sorry to make a joke here, but there was a funny moment where we got a code red and I became a runner a few years ago and that's great and it's good for my health, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But as we were running for our lives, what it felt like, I was just like, I'm so glad I'm a runner. Like I'm just so agile and fast right now, but you're only as fast as your slowest people. Oh, <laughs> and, so, and so I felt like such an asshole because I was like, do, 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 do. I'm like, oh my God. Like I should have been back there with everyone. Oh, <laughs> like, oh gosh. You probably don't need to include that in the podcast. <laughs> well, I think this is a very good lesson that we should all have a little bit of fitness so that we can run faster when we need to. <laughs> fitness is key when I mean yeah. it kind of it, it's not totally key but like it helps, it helps when you are carrying heavy equipment and your tripods yeah. and like you got to move. Gotta well, move quickly. sometimes it's like either get fit and run faster mm-hmm. or end up in jail so mm. you know get fit and run faster. <laughs> we did we did get away and I mean for I I make, I make a laughing matter out of it but it's it's not really. I mean yeah. it's always quite 
terrifying and you don't want any close calls. And 